All right, what's up, guys? Uh, Dr. Jaws here, and tonight we are learning about the Sand Devil, uh, which is actually, it's an awesome shark. It is super, super cool. Um, not really well, well known, so uh, before we get started, I screwed up last week, and I had no music going, and I thought I did. So I'm going to do a quick audio check, and we're going to give Journey another chance. Uh, I mean, it's completely my fault, but... Uh, I was so excited and psyched to be listening to the Journey soundtrack, and I thought I had it going, and I didn't have it going at all. So, but, you know, Journey, it's a game about sand, and the sand devil, you know, like the shark named after sand, so I thought it'd be kind of appropriate. So, what I'm gonna do, just a really quick audio check, just hold on tight as I, as I make sure the music is going. So, here we go. Ding -a -ding -a. As I get better at this, I hope this just doesn't happen. Just a really quick audio check. Just hold on tight as I as I make sure the music is going. So it works. It works. Dang All it. right. Thank God. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, that's so frustrating. I don't know what happened last time. So I, I'm assuming that just like my computer overloaded or like a copyright thing i don't really know what happened last time but anyway it's working it's fully working now so you are listening to journey uh the 202012 game soundtrack beautiful game beautiful soundtrack for a beautiful shark so um i guess we'll just dive in and then um i mean since there's not that many viewers right now um just as a quick explanation these are cool little study parties, uh, just kind of a relaxing thing to do, um, just to put on in the background or to study along to. Um, they are shark focused, but whether or not you're a marine biologist, um, you know, you're more than welcome to join in and comment. And um, have any, if you have any questions, just drop them in. Um, we do a new shark every week and a new soundtrack every week, um, or, or just like a, a relaxing YouTube channel. There's like a lot of um, YouTube channels with like relaxing music. so. But part of the reason I want to do this is like I just wanted to kind of create a cool little space where people can come together and talk about sharks and study and chill out on a Monday night. So every Monday night at nine, uh, this is live stream number three. So um, I guess that's all I got. I mean, I'm I'm kind of tiring myself out explaining it over and over again, but I feel like I have to just because it's like not many people are watching right now and tonight might still be a call to the void. We've had a couple people, but. Most of them are people I know, so but we'll see what happens. But hello, future people. Uh, I hope you are winding down tonight. Um, usually I have tea, but tonight is a cup of coffee kind of night, so just got some black coffee, man. Mm. Mm. All right, sand devil time. So, um, angel sharks, like in general, I think people think there's only one kind of angel shark, and there's actually like... 10 different species, um, 15 different species. There's quite a few different kinds of angel sharks. Um, and I think the most well-known are the classic angel shark, Squatina squatina, and the Pacific angel shark, Squatina, ooh, California. Oh, I gotta figure this out. Consulting the, the tome. What is a Pacific angel shark name? Oh yeah, uh, Squatina californica. Okay, cool, I got it right, so. I actually literally opened it right up to his hand devil. I didn't have that bookmark. That's actually really cool. But anyway, so the tonight shark is Squatina du Merrill, which uh, is not very well known, but it's an angel shark that lives on the Atlantic coast of the United States and the Gulf of Mexico as well. So um, sometimes it's called Atlantic angel shark, but um, more like the official name is sand devil, which I think is cooler and it's just better you know i think sand devil is better it's more unique and interesting and i like it so um and the reason it's called sand devil is because this shark bites and all and like all angel sharks bite but like you know this one gives a nasty little nip um angel sharks are really funny because they're kind of pugnacious um you you just like despite their they're, they're kind of medium-sized sharks but despite their size you know like 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 they'll just like kind of be like I don't want to say they're prone to biting, but they, they're famous for giving a nasty nip. They're famous for biting back. This is not what I would describe as like a docile shark. This is a shark that if you approach it too closely or if you kind of like harass it, it's going to bite you. And um, they have these like needly teeth because they're like ambush predators. So 
you know, like those teeth, like just lunge out to snap up like a fish. And like fishermen, whenever they handle these sharks, um, you know, like like it's it's you got to be very very cautious with them because like those little needly teeth um, just kind of lunge out and like they're very snappy. They're just like snappy sharks. I always I always say they have like puppy teeth. Like you, you know, like teething puppies like like to bite everything, and the teeth are very sharp. That's kind of what I think about when I think about sand devils. But anyway, all that to say, this is not a very well known shark, and it's hard to find footage or photographic material of it. So what we're gonna do, I'm just kind of curious. I'm gonna start out on YouTube, just seeing what we can see, because that's not a sand devil, that's an angel shark. Um, you can kind of tell uh, angel sharks have this like wavy little uh, pale pattern on their back. Sand devils don't really have that. Let's see. Squatina australis is not the right one. It's very hard to get sand devil footage or anything, so I'm not surprised. Yeah, see, see this little like like this light wavy looking pattern, almost like a water ripple. That that's how you can tell that's an angel shark, Squatina Squatina. Um, that's a cool area. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, I forgot that sand devils are also named uh, or a name for tornadoes. Interesting. Hey, it's my video, Sand Devil Cake, LOL. Oh my gosh, yay. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> oh my gosh, okay, that's really fun. Um, we might we might do this as last resort because in this video, I'm talking about baking a cake and we're not gonna go into that, but I have a lot of video, uh, photos, like verified Sand Devil photos, so that actually might be a good resource. Let's put a pin in that for now. Uh, angel shark. Oh, I don't know what that is. Oh, dude. Oh my god. Okay. Dude, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet just came out. I'm playing it. My brothers and their girlfriends are playing it. We're all playing. I'm actually pretty behind compared to them, but we're all playing it. I'm a huge Pokemon fan. If if you, uh, in case you didn't really figure that out already with my little Mudkip doll thing. Eh, I don't like saying doll. It's a, it's a, it's just, it's a blush. It's a, it's a, it's a gift. Captain Kip is a gift. Anyway. <clears throat> anyway, I'm playing uh, Scarlet and Violet, or Violet specifically. Uh, game came out, what, Friday? Super fun. Love it. Maybe the best Pokemon game I've ever played. Maybe the best one I've ever played. It's really good. So, I've got... What do I have? I have a Magikarp. A, <laughs> a Houndour. Uh, a Skiploom, which is... Going really well. Skiploom, I'm surprised. Skiploom is, like, really helping me out. Um, what else I have? I had a Pikachu. I chose Fue Coco. I kind of ditched them both. And I've got a shark blah, blah, blah like the fire, the little fire guy. I named him Prince Zuko. Uh, Sharkerade, I think is the name. Uh, he's pretty cool. Uh, Gimme Ghoul. Gimme Ghoul is awesome. And what else I have? I have one more. What am I missing? Oh, a Routes that I named uh, David Blaine. So they're all doing well. Uh, it's a good team so far. Just got one badge. But anyway, I highly recommend. Fun game. Sand Devil. Uh, let's see. Oh, shoot. I just got a little notification. My stream quality lowered because my um, thing isn't fast enough. My internet's not fast enough. Sorry about that, guys. Um, hope you can still hear the music kind of asking a lot out of my computer right now. Whoa! What is this? Wait, sorry, we gotta we gotta look at this really quick. Oh, no, not that. We don't want to look at stupid ads. No, I hate this ad. I hate this. I will never buy, you know, stupid ad. Okay. Whoa! Wait, what is this? That's so cool! <laughs> what is this? This is not a sand devil. It's, I mean, this it's the same genus, but that's such good footage. What is this? It might be an angel shark, like an angel, an actual angel shark. That's super cool. All right, uh, let's look at the description. Thank you, uh, Three Elements Videography. Let's leave a like for you. That is super, super cool. The Angel Shark Canary Islands. Okay, so it's, it's Squatita Squatina. That is awesome, guys. That's super cool. All right. Uh, 
Honestly, like, oh, yeah, let's check this out. This is what I mean that uh, angel sharks are kind of like, you don't mess with them. Like, you, you, uh, let's make this bigger. They're tough. Like, they're, they're feisty. Like, I, I'm sure this guy, this is going to bite this guy. Yeah, yeah, don't do that. Don't, please don't harass sharks. Please don't, you know, touch them or pet them or, or tug them. They're going to do stuff like, yeah, don't, don't do that. Yeah, that shark's not happy. Look at that. Look at his fins, by the way. Look, look how he's angling his left pectoral and his right pectoral. That's that's pretty interesting. Like his left pectoral's down, his right pectoral's up. Is this actually going to be a bite, like an attack, or is this? I oh oh, what's going on here? Don't do it. <laughs> it's just yeah. See, see, these guys are tough. Yeah, don't mess with them. Yeah, they bite. You know, that diver is like three times that shark's size, and that shark doesn't care. He's gonna bite you, man. Oh, man. That's a good rule, kind of in general, like, uh, don't underestimate any kind of fish by its size, because it's like, uh, I've been I've been bitten by fish diving before. I got bit by a sergeant major, which is like, this this big, this big. Abdu Ab Abudaduff, I think is the scientific name. Abudaduff, he's my enemy, Abudaduff. And then um, a sheep's head. I've gotten bit by a sheep's head before. So uh, it doesn't matter. It's kind of funny. Like rules in the water are a little bit different than in uh, terrestrial environments. Like you just gotta, you just, you just gotta watch out. Like, like, like you, you'd be surprised what will kind of charge you and nip at you, um, which is pretty interesting. So okay, I don't think we're gonna get actual sand devil footage because all of these are angel sharks squatina squatina and we're looking for squatina do merrill so let's and i'm just shelling for my own channel like it and subscribe but like let's just check out my sand devil video just for the photos like none of the cake stuff none of the none of the goofy doofy stuff let's just look at the photos hey what what, what? There's ads. I'm not getting that ad revenue. What are you doing, YouTube? You know, you're saying I don't have enough subscribers. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what you're saying. Hey, get out of here, Walmart. I know I should get an ad blocker. I'm so sorry, guys. I'm so sorry. But, okay. Two ads? Wait, wait. Dude, I'm not getting any of that revenue. What's going on there? Okay, there we go. Younger version of me. Screw that. Let's go to the Sand Devil stuff. I didn't realize it was clean shaven in Florida. This is my Florida apartment. Okay, part one, sand devil itself. I used to live in uh, Bradenton, uh, like like in the Tampa Bay area. So I looked really young then. Man, that's that's not that long ago. So, oh man, I aged like Obi Wan Kenobi. <laughs> um, all right, I really zoomed in on this. So. Uh, sand devils kind of vary widely in appearance. Uh, it's kind of hard to find a trait that. Oh boy, this angle is wacky. It's kind of hard to find a unifying trait. Really, for me, it's like kind of the range is the biggest thing. Where it's like, if it's in the Atlantic and it's flat. Oh yeah, cool. It's about to say that's not a sand devil. Um, if it's in the Atlantic and if it's flat, it's a sand devil. Um, the, they're sometimes described as blue-gray. That's a really good sand devil photo. So this is Squatina du Merrill. This is the right shark that we're talking about tonight. They're sometimes described as like blue-gray. Um, not a really distinctive color pattern. Um, just kind of like a uniform pattern. Um, there are some small, slight, diff like slight features. Uh, kind of like the proportion of the head. Um, the proportion of the eyes related to the oh man like kind of like the nos the the um the the nostril nasal ridges and then um the what is that what do you call that again spiracles it's like huge spiracles what do you call those spiracles i'm just checking the book out really quick what do you call that again spiracle yeah that is a spiracle sorry about that yeah, I'm just like used to sharks having like small spiracles, but like that makes sense. Um, angel sharks having enormous spiracles because like, so spiracles are like uh, part of like like sharks breathing, and it makes sense that this guy has enormous spiracles because it's a bottom dweller. It lays down on the sand, and 
you know, it's not swimming through the water column as often as like other sharks. And so like, it makes sense that the sphericals are larger to maximize um, oxygen flow um, or just like water flow and oxygen capture. This is a super cool sand devil photo. I forget where it's from, but uh, that's actually a really good photo. All right, so let's, I'm just gonna read the description of the sand devil while these nice little photos are playing. Almost plain bluish to ashy gray, no elaborate markings or ocelli, dusky or blackish spots irregularly present or absent, uh, small white stop, spots often present in young. The underside is white with red spots and reddish fin margins. Uh, dorsal and caudal fins are darker with light bases. Uh, dorsal fin rear tips are light. A simple tape. See, none of these are like super, super descriptive. Like it's it's a it's a hard chart to kind of like peg down, you know. Um, simple tapering nasal barbels, uh, weakly fringed or smooth anterior nasal flaps. Those are very tiny, subtle features that you have to be very close to the shark, you know, to kind of get that. These are all the sand. Dude, look at all these sand devil photos. I forgot I collected so many. Um, do, 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 do. Uh, lateral head folds low, uh, no triangular lobes. Strongly concave between the large eye, uh, uh, large eyes. Uh, eye spherical space less than 1.5 times eye length. Um, again, that, and in the photo, the, this picture, this is Squatina squatina, which is not the right species. Um, but I, I'm, I just put it in this video as a comparison. Do, do, do. And again, Squatina squatina. It's got these distinctive like little ripple lines. Squatina dermale doesn't really have that. So that's one difference. Um, oh, I'm glad I did a side by side. There you go. Like and subscribe, Dr. Jaws channel. It's super cool. If you want to learn about sharks, it's awesome. Oh, this is great. I'm so glad I did this. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. This is cool. All right. So check this out, guys. Uh, on the photo of the left, this is a sand devil fin with thorns. On the photo on the light, uh, on the right, this is a sand devil fin without thorns. Um, these are two different genders, like the left is a, a male sand devil and then the right is a female sand devil. Uh, so this is a secondary sexual characteristic. So this shark, uh, males of sand devil, uh, male sand devils have thorns on their fins and female sand devils um, have very smooth fins, which is super cool. Like, like I, I, secondary sexual characteristics in sharks, uh, they're there, they're just not, they're usually not as like obvious as this one. And I think this one is super, super cool because it's kind of analogous to like, like antlers in deer or kind of like beards in men, kind of, you know, I'd like to think that, I don't know. But like, I just think this is super cool. It's kind of adorable and interesting, you know, um, but ma male sand devils have the thorns, female sand devils have smooth skin. I don't know why they have that but that's a super cool secondary sexual characteristic. Um, for the most part, uh, female sharks are larger than male sharks. Um, that's the only other, and I don't know if you would really call that a secondary sexual characteristic, because that's kind of more like, I guess primary, you know? Like, I don't know. I don't think that, was count, that would count as secondary, but as a general rule of thumb, like, female sharks are bigger than male sharks. Like, female sharks, proportionally, like, they're, they're larger, and they have, like, tougher skin because a lot of sharks most sharks maybe all sharks um i know when they do like courtship like males bite females um as as they like not insert like the clasper into the cloaca do you, do you say cloaca i think cloaca um but anyway point being uh female female sharks have tougher skin and are bigger and male sharks are smaller and don't have as tough skin because like um during mating male sharks bite female sharks and um yeah, I think that's like an adaptation for that. But anyway, for this species, uh, boy sand devils have thorns and girl sand devils have smooth skin. Um, one of my favorite things about the species, I just think it's really cool. And uh, yeah, I'm glad I put that in the video. It's been a while since I've seen this video. I don't really, once I kind of slap something up on YouTube, I don't really look at it, you know? Why did I put male asterisk? What does that mean? Photo from, oh, <laughs> all right, cover my bases. It's not, uh, sand devils have this, you know, I'm just being accurate as possible. So anyway, uh, fairly broad, posteriorly angular pectoral fins, a few small discrete thorns on snout between eyes and spiracles and young, uh, becoming more numerous and forming patches in adults. Uh, the thorns on the back of young 
are reduced and remain inconspicuous as adults. Okay, we're not going to watch the cake part. So, sorry. Uh, I made a cake. <laughs> uh, which I'm actually, hold on. Like, we won't watch the whole thing. I'm actually somewhat proud of this. Like, I made a white chocolate sand devil and put it under, like, a bunch of sugar. You know, I'm kind of proud of that as far as what it looked like. Uh, I'm not proud of it as far as what it tasted like. It's not that good. So, but it looked cool. All right. Cool. So, anyway, uh, tonight we're going to go into sharkreferences.com. Um, I don't think you could see this little EK window, by the way. I'm just double checking really quick. But, um, sharkreferences.com. Yeah, you can't see that. You can't see that. Cool. Okay. So, sharkreferences.com is an extremely cool resource and super, super valuable um, for getting primary research materials uh, on sharks, like publicly available scientific papers or sources. Um, they have a lot of other cool features that we might actually kind of like take a look at tonight. For example, uh, photos. I didn't realize they had these photos. Oh, check it out. Dude, look at those jaws. This is what I mean by these needly puppy, uh, puppy teeth. Look, look how sharp those teeth look. These are super cool photos. But that's not why we're here. Sorry, we're gonna go look at the literature references for sharkreferences.com. So, and see, they're arranged chronologically. I want to go the most recent one. Um, I just need a cup of coffee really quick. Or a swig of my coffee really quick. I actually might get some water in a little bit because my throat's kind of a little dry, so. Hmm. Here's the, uh, let's go back to the pretty pictures. Actually, yeah. Let me just get some water really quick. <laughs> Excuse me. Man, I really needed that. So, all right. Am I still, yep, I'm still streaming. LOL. Okay. So, let's go back to literature references. All right, here we go. Let's see what we got. Factors affecting gestation period. Uh, not feeling that. Risk-based assessment advise responsible consumption of vertebrates. Not really feeling that. Hmm. I'm kind of curious about this. The comparative energetics of the chondrichthians reveals universal links between respiration, reproduction, and lifespan. Let's just check this out really quick. Uh, and what I mean is, like, we're not going to read, like, the whole thing. We're just going to check out the abstract. And give a shout-out to, um... Are these... Wait, hold on. Aug uh, Augustine Starlight? Is this, like, last name, first name? Hold on, I just want to make sure I got this right. Star Starlight Augustine. Constadia Licka. Sebastian Alam. Koizman. Okay, sorry about that. Yeah, sorry about that. Sorry about that, guys. So, so shout out to uh, Starlight Augustine, uh, Constadia Licka, and Sebastian A L M Koizman, Koizman, um, for this paper. Uh, I, I just want to you know shout out every time we do an abstract or read a paper um, as publicly available. You know, these are scientists who made this and conducted this research. So I just want to do a shout out as we kind of take a look at what's going on. So abstract. Uh, the Add My Pet, huh, collection of data on energetics and dynamic energy budget parameters currently contains 200 out of over 100, uh, 1,100 extant species of chondrichthians. This milestone in the compilation of data for this group led us to investigate one due to the characteristics that we reported in 2014. For 20 chondrichthian species relative to other fish still hold, two are novel patterns and properties revealed given the additional data, and three 
Do the four Condrictinian subgroups, Galian, Squalian, Rays, and Chimeras. Oh, that's cool. Uh, differ in properties. Um, I'll explain Galian and Squalian in a little bit, because I'm assuming that's like Galeomorphs and Squalomorphs, which are two, the two major blocks of sharks are Galeomorphs and Squalomorphs. I kind of forget which one is which, so we'll, we'll go into that a little bit. Um, actually, screw it. Let's go into that right now. Galeomorphs. <laughs> Galeomorphs, sorry. Oops. Uh, Galeomorphs. Galeomorphy. Alright. Uh, Galeomorphy is a soup order of cartilaginous fish, which includes all modern sharks except the dogfish and its relatives. Well, okay. Okay, so heterodontiforms, erectiloboforms, lamnoforms, and carcarinoforms. Okay, cool. Awesome. So, Galeomorphs. Right. Um, I forget what specifically distinguishes them. If you know, if you're a scientist who knows, please leave that comment below. Um, because I forget the technic technically what makes a Galeomorph a Galeomorph, I forget. But just kind of like as a, as a gist, um, it's like modern sharks. That's not a good term, but like modern sharks sharks that kind of evolved later in the timeline if you will like um that's not a really good term and i'm sure i'm making people crazy but um heterodontiforms are the bullhead sharks erectiloboforms are like the carpet sharks so it's like a whale shark nurse shark um wobegons lambdaforms are like the mackerel sharks like the white shark uh, like in this photo um, and then carcarinoforms are like the bull shark or um cat sharks so these are sharks that are kind of like I don't want to say like more advanced, you know, because it's that's not a really good term for it. But like, um, now that I'm remembering this, squalomorphs are kind of sometimes classified as like the ancient sharks, or like, or not classified, but like just referred to as like the prehistoric sharks, the ancient sharks, the um, squalomorphy. Oops, sorry, I totally misspelled that. Um, that totally makes sense. Yeah, look at that. Okay, so squalomorphs are hexanchiforms, which are always uh, called like prehistoric sharks. Those are like the frilled shark, um, the cow sharks, like six gill, seven gill sharks. Uh, squaliforms, which are the dogfish sharks, um, like the spiny dogfish um, in this photo. And then squatiniforms, which are like the angel sharks, um, which we're talking about today. And then pristiaforiforms, which are the saw sharks. And then this is not included, uh, but it should be, is echinorhinoforms, which is the bramble sharks. So. Um, oh man, shoot, I forget specifically, there's, it's something about, um, how the head is connected to the jaw, uh, that distinguishes squalomorphs and galeomorphs, I totally forget what it is, uh, we might, let's put a pin in that for now, I might, I might go grab a book on that, um, cause it's probably gonna take me like minutes, hours, centuries to figure that out. But if you are a shark scientist and you can succinctly describe what makes a squalomorph a squalomorph and what makes a galeomorph a galeomorph, please leave a comment below because uh, that would be really cool and uh, just super nice. So, but anyway, the 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 biggest takeaway is like these are two major groups of sharks. These are like you can split sharks up into these two camps. And taking us all the way back to the research, um, that's what this. Uh, group of scientists talked about when I say Galian, they mean Galeomorphs. When I say Squalian, they mean Squalomorphs. And then Rays and Chimeras, totally different, not sharks. So, okay. Anyway, let's go. Uh, different properties. We argue that a better understanding of these properties is key to sustainable management of the rapidly dwindling populations worldwide. Most of the interest specific scatter in ultimate reproduction rate as a as function of ultimate body weight stems from differences in the mass of neonates as fraction of that of the mother, which is very high in chondrichthians. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be honest guys, I'm a little lost, but we'll we'll get through it. Um, the ultimate neonate mass production is found to be proportional to the ultimate respiration rate, with proportionality factor of ten grams per mole. No, I don't like moles. Damn it. Uh, I don't like moles. Uh, okay. We're going to do it. We're going to figure out what this means. This is no offense to the scientists because it, this is completely a comment on me. I, I, I should know my stuff. So, sorry. 
The lifespan is found to be inversely proportional to weight specific respiration. Uh, which means, which is, sorry, that was a weird snapshot on my book. Um, <laughs> With, proportion, with a proportionality factor of 0 0.1 moles per gram. Uh, the ultimate weight equals the lifetime... Sorry. Do, 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 do. Uh, the ultimate weight equals lifetime uh, accumulated neonate mass production. These relationships also apply with more scatter. 12, 3,000 animal species in the AMP collection. I have no idea what we're doing right now. Uh, no, more coffee. Uh, sharks and rays were found to be more demand species, contrary to ray fin fish and chimeras, which are supply species. Chimeras also have the smallest weight at birth and, and pre-sociality pre coefficient compared to sharks and rays. Galeans grow much slower than squalians and rays. Really? But the chimeras grow even slower. The lifespan equals 25 times the incubation time for chondrichthians but they are rather unique in this respect. Last but not least, we discussed the odd implications recently published data on aerojects of the Greenland shark. I was going to say, okay, let's... This claim kind of throws me off a little bit. Galleons grow more slower than squalians. It's a little strange, uh, because, like, again, you remember I said, like, gal galleon morphs are, like, the more advanced sharks, and squall morphs are the more prehistoric sharks? A lot of those prehistoric sharks, they live in the deep. Uh, you know, hexantriforms are all deep water sharks. Um, most of the squaliforms are deep water sharks. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like deep water sharks grow more slowly than shallow water sharks, which would make sense because shallow water sharks have higher access to like, you know, like resource, like, like food and, and like, like, I mean, they're directly connected to, like, the sunlit zone, you know, where, like, all the photosynthesis is happening, and all the plankton, and the phytoplankton, and, like, like just explosions of growth are happening, and, like, you know, in the twilight zone, and the, in the midnight zone, you're not getting that same kind of, like, you know, dynamic and energetics, and I just, I don't know. I mean, I, I could totally be wrong, but I, I just feel like it makes more sense that galliomorphs will grow, grow more quickly than squalomorphs as a whole. I... I don't know about that one, so that's interesting. So, okay, I'm just gonna kind of blast through this and see if I can pick up what the heck is going on. And again, this is a comment on me, and a comment on Monday, and a comment on a lack of coffee. So this is not the scientist's fault or anything. They're not doing anything wrong. I just I just don't know what's going on. So let's see. Um, uh, <laughs> I just, hold on. Oh boy. Uh, once we get like super into this um i do have a couple friends who are scientists who i might just invite on here and be like can you help me can you can we just talk together and figure this out together so um i, I have um a florida friend who is uh, i think he's doing his postdoc right now and he he could totally save us like uh yeah. Wish he was here. What is this? Dude, I do not know what I'm doing right now. This is crazy. I totally even forget what moles are. Moles are, like, you know, kind of basic. Like, moles are, like, uh, that's, like, early college chemistry, late high school chemistry. That's pretty basic. So, oopsie doopsie. Mm-hmm. Huh. Survivor curse for parameters and other traits for Kondrukthian and Taxa and the ambient collections. What is that? It's like, it's like, it's like, it's like, it's like it almost sounds, I mean, it sounds, sounds like this is a continuation of a different study. Like, like, like work, it, is, it, is, it is basically a continuation of a different study. Um. What is going on? Alright, 
What's kind of cool, by the way, uh, just, so, just just kind of thinking out loud, uh, part of what's nice about the live stream is I'm, I'm literally stopping right now. Like, I, I'm literally trying to figure out what's going on here. And it's okay to be quiet for a little bit and just enjoy the music as I apply my mind to, like, the hell this is about. So, um, but yeah, yeah, it's, it's like... There's no way I could do, like, lectures, lecture lectures, like, for an hour plus. Like, I mean, it's just, there's no way you can kind of keep up that energy. And I also think it's more fun to have this kind of dynamism and also this honesty in terms of, like, I, I don't know everything. Like, there's a lot that I really don't know. So it's cool to kind of, like, learn together, you know? So. Um... The reproductive investment agreement on sharks by far exceeds that of any other 3,000 animal species from all main phyla. What is the AMP collection? This seems to be the key to what we're doing, so we'll figure that out later. Hmm. Yeah. Also, looks like somebody is watching. Hello. I uh, hope you're enjoying your night and doing something really cool. And uh, if you know what's going on, please feel free to comment because I still don't know what's going on here. Hmm. Let's maybe go to. Let's go to the discussion. Just to see if there's anything... Well, no. Is this not a discussion? Oh, there we go. Discussion conclusions. I have no idea. Also, why is the sand devil in this? <laughs> like, all right, so let's find the AMP collection. Chondrichthines in the AMP collection. Uh, all right, here we go. Oh, this is where it is. All right. Uh, Squatina, 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 Squatina de Merrill. A B A P A M. What does all that mean? Okay. Well, he's in here. Um, what do these symbols mean? The codes of the day types are presented in table A2. Oh, there you go. Age or time since birth at puberty. Oh, cool. Alright, so these are just, like, different... Interesting. Uh... Where'd you go, buddy? Let's go to the barrel. A, B, A, P, A, M, L, B. So these are all the data points that they have. Okay, this this is some, like, okay, this is not my forte. I, I this kind of, like, uh, what do you call it? I think I'm starting to pick up what this is, and it's it's not a field I'm super, super good with or comfortable with. Um, I don't want to say it's biostats. It's kind of biostats, but it's, like, uh, I'm starting, but I'm starting to pick up what this is, uh, what, what this is laying down, so interesting. Um, so age at birth, they have age at birth, uh, age at puberty, I think age at death. So they have all these like little metrics on the sand devil. Okay, but are they gonna, 
Oh, interesting. Shoot, yeah, I don't, I don't know how good this is if I stay on here, because um, it's just uh, this is this is a kind of science that I am, I'm really not that well versed in. So I don't know if I can make a lot of meaningful commentary on this. Pretty interesting though. It's just like it's just kind of like. I don't know what I'm looking at. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Very interesting. Let's go back to the abstract. Let's give it one more shot. Um, they have all this life life history data about the sand devil and 3,000 other sharks. The comparative energetics of the Kadrichthians reveals universal links between respiration, reproduction, and lifespan. Okay. Okay. Add my pet collection of data energetics, dynamic energy, budget parameters, blah blah blah. Contains 200 over 100. Blah blah blah. Population data for this group let's investigate. So they have all of these data points. They want to find out do the characteristics that report in 2014 or whatever. <sighs> okay. Uh... Okay. Okay. Most of the interspecific scatter in ultimate reproduction rate as function of ultimate body weight stems from differences in the mass of neonates as fraction of that of the mother, which is very high in chondrichthians. Oh god, okay. <laughs> You're literally seeing me trying to figure this out. It's a function of the ultimate body weight stems from differences in the mass of neonates as fraction of that of the mother. The ultimate neonates neonate mass production is found to be proportional to the ultimate respiration rate, which with proportional out, proportionally factor of 10 grams per mole. Lifespan is found to be inversely proportional to weight specific respiration with a proportionality factor of 0 0.1 grams per mole. The ultimate weight equals the lifetime cumulated neonates mass production. This relationship, these relationships also apply with more scatter. Sharks and rays are found to be more demand species contrary. Okay. You want uh, reef and fish and chimeras, which are supply species. Chimeras also have the smallest weight of birth and um okay okay uh agalids go much slower than squirrels or rays voice painting goals okay we're going to get to respect less time we discuss how we can okay interesting okay okay so i don't 100 percent understand what's going on in this paper I kind of get the general vibe of what kind of science this is, which is like actually legitimately really cool and really interesting. It's just not something that I, I'm, again, I'm really well versed with or 100% understand. So I am sure there are people out there who would love this. So this is called the comparative energetics of the Chondrichthians reveals universal links between respiration, reproduction, and lifespan by Augustine, Lika, and Koizman. Koizman. And this is 2022 Journal of Sea Research. So this is actually pretty cool. If you are into, I don't know if you call this like biostats or I don't know if you would call this bios. I guess it's biostats, basically, kind of biostatistics, kind of. Um, it's like life history studies. It is pretty cool. It's it's very very much like something that I'm not really grasping it. I can't really make a lot of commentary on, but this is actually a pretty cool study. Um, the only big takeaway I'm getting is that Galeans grow much slower than Squalians and Rays, which is interesting to me. I don't know if I agree with that, but like, I, I mean, I, I, dude, I didn't do the study. I don't know what's going on in the study. And you know, this seems pretty cool. So um, a fun challenge is if you are someone who's into I don't know if I'm using the right term biostats, but if you're interested in like life history characteristics, or if you're interested in biostats, um, if you want to break this down, and you know this is a good challenge. If you can break this down and kind of explain to the lay <laughs> what's going on with this paper, and you know kind of like the the like like what what's kind of like the value, um, you know like what's kind of like the biggest takeaway. Um, you know, that would be really cool I, if you can leave a comment on this because this, this is really interesting. It's kind of like it's not something I can wrap my head around really well and explain really well. I kind of get the general gist of what's going on here, but yeah, that's a good challenge. If somebody can like comment on um, this study and what kind of the key takeaways are, that would be really, really cool. So um, yeah, 
so it's not a very Sand Devil specific study. It just was like something that the Sand Devil is a part of. So that's kind of fascinating. All right, I'm gonna get out of here. Uh, sorry if that annoyed people, but I mean, it's a study party night, you know, like, I don't know everything. I'm, you know, I think it was Aristotle who said the wisest person is the one who admits when he doesn't know. Um, so there you go. Let's find a Sand Devil specific study. Cause again, I'm more interested, I think I said this in a couple live streams ago, like, I'm more interested in like behavior, ecology, cladistics, like that, or fossils, like that's more my stuff, so. Um, but that's a cool study. That is actually a really cool study. So, yeah. Check it out. Um, let me check if any comments, no comments. Let's go into. Ooh, evolutionary trends of the conserved neo cranium shape in angel sharks. Yes, let's check that out. Because remember I said earlier, like, it's hard to find, like, something distinguishing about the sand devil. So let's see if this might be kind of more, a little bit more more juicy. Let's see what's going on here. Uh, let, me, let me get some more coffee and water. All right. Evolutionary trends of the conserved neocranium shape in angel sharks. Uh, Elasmorhynchi, the shark skates and rays, forms one of the most diverse groups of marine predators. With a fossil record extending back to, in, into the Devonium, several modifications in their body plan illustrates their body shape diversity through time. The angel sharks, whose fossil record dates back to the late Jurassic, ooh, that's really cool, I didn't know that, some 160 uh, million, um, yeah, million years ago, have a dorsal ventrally flattened body, similar to skates and rays. Fossil skeletons of this group show that the overall morphology was well established earlier in its history by examining the skull shape of well-preserved fossil material compared to extant angel sharks using geometric morphometric methods within a phylogenetic framework, we were able to determine the conservative skull shape amongst angel sharks with a high degree of integration. The amorphous face occupation of extant angel sharks is rather restricted with extensive overlap. Most of the differences in skull shape are related to their geographic distribution patterns. This is super cool, guys! Uh, we found higher levels of disparity in extinct forms, but lower ones in extant species. Interesting. Uh, since angel sharks display a highly specialized prey capture behavior, we suggest that the morpho morphological integration and biogeographic process are the main drivers of the diversity, which might limit their capacity to display higher disparities since their origin. Interesting. Super, super cool. All right, so fun fact about this. Um, and it kind of ties uh, my favorite chart book in too. So um, I mentioned earlier, not tonight, but earlier in, in, these, in this series that I got this from the American Museum of Natural History um, in New York City. That museum did a special exhibit uh, called just sharks. It was just called sharks. I don't know if it's still running, but that exhibit was amazing and it had fossil sharks, including a fossil angel shark, um, which is just like blew my mind because like, you know, sharks are made out of cartilage, not bone. So the idea of like having any of that preserved is just like unbelievable. So that was one of the coolest things I've ever seen. And it's super cool to see a study on angel shark fossils because I've seen an angel shark fossil. Super cool. All right, this is uh, Fival A. Lopez Romero, Sebastian Stumpf, uh, Catherine Pfaff, uh, Giuseppe Merama, uh, Zarina Johansson, and Jurgen Krewet. So this is their paper published in Scientific Reports, Nature Research. And I think my soundtrack stuff, yeah, I wanna, I wanna listen to Journey. I wanna listen to Journey, sorry about that. My soundtrack stuff kind of went off for a second. All right, so let's see if we can kind of break this. Oh, this is cool, guys. Look at this. This is super cool. All right, check it out. All right, so the blue area is Squatina California, uh, Californica and Squatina Dumeril. So that's the um, Pacific Angel Shark and Sand Devil. That's cool. All right, blue group. I wonder what makes that the blue group. And this is really, whoa, this is super cool. Is this a, a phylogeny? Yeah, 
Distribution of phylogeny of extant angel sharks worldwide, the colors correspond to the clads highlighted in the phylogeny. That's so cool. All right, so I did not know that. I'm actually, dude, I'm learning right now. This is awesome. So Squatina Californica and Squatina dumeril, in this, it's, it looks like they are more closely related to each other than all the other kinds of angel sharks. And you know, each color represents a different clad, like a different group which is super, super cool. So you got this South American group, this North American group, this Australian group, this uh, African group, and then this is fascinating. You've got this group, this Eurasian group, but they, look at that, they're completely different sides of the world. Well, yeah, that's interesting. Um, so Mediterranean and North Atlantic, North Eastern Atlantic angel sharks are more closely related to Japanese, Chinese, like, West Pacific angel sharks than they are to the sand double. That's kind of interesting. That this clad, uh, Japonica, Tergosilatoids, Lagnota, Nebulosa, Formosa, Oculata, Squatina, and Aculiata, that's fascinating that those guys are more closely related. Interesting. Weird. Huh. Wonder why. I guess we'll find out. Oh, this is super cool. So, ma, I mm, don't know how, ah, this is fascinating. P. acanthoderma, is that an angel, angel shark? Fossil angel shark, Pseudorhina acanthoderma, yes, adult specimen is this picture. So this is a fossil angel shark. That's not the one I've seen, I don't think, but that's super cool. Wow, that's so cool. Okay, so that's an ancestral angel shark. That's really interesting. So in this, in this, uh, is this a cladogram, or would you say that's a phylogeny? Okay. Uh, I forget if a cladogram. Let's let's just look up cladogram really quick. I forget if a cladogram is actually on a time. Oh, come on, Google. Cladogram. Branching diagram showing the cladistic relationship between number of species. I don't think that is actually tied to a time. I think that's just about a relationship, right? Uh, now nah, I forget how this works. Yeah. I, I won't spend a lot of time on this. I'm just, I'm just checking this really quick. Phylogenetic tree would be the one that's time oriented. Yeah. Ah, uh, screw it. Okay, this is basic biology, and I forget how it works. So, <laughs> okay. Um, uh, what I was just curious in just now is, um, you know, is this tied to a time scale? It looks like it is. I just want to make sure I'm reading this correctly. So, this fossil angel shark was in the Jurassic period, went extinct in the late Jurassic. Modern angel sharks. I I uh, I don't want to. Uh, like for these divergence like the like these little nodes where they diverge um you know i just wanted to see if that was like actually tied to a time period in a sense like for example for this red clad did this possibly evolve uh 25 million years ago or am i reading this incorrectly um so that, that's what i'm just wondering aloud like and for this little subgroup with you know our angel sharks uh squatting de Merrill and californica did this evolve 10 million years ago, or am I not reading this correctly? So, I would assume this is kind of tied to the timeline, but I don't know how you can really determine that, so... Sounds like we gotta read. So, <laughs> let's see. Um, oh, this is cool. It's a cool study. Look at this! This is cool. Alright, so morphospace of neurocranium for extant clads of, and fossil angel sharks. Morphospace of neurocranium of only the extant clads of angel sharks. A. B. Deformation grids indicate the minimum and maximum value of the principal component. Alright. 
So, like, I, I, I don't know the ins and outs of what this means, but I kind of get the gist where it's like they're comparing the, like, the skull, like, like not the skull, but the cranium of um, these different angel shark species and looking for differences, and it's just fascinating. That is super, super cool. All right, so Squatina de Merrill, Squatina californica. Kind of looks like Squatina de Merrill is a little bit more similar to Squatina oculata, which is in a different clad than Squatina californica if I'm reading this correctly. It's kind of fascinating. But then when you look at this one, you've got Squatina de Merrill here and Squatina Californica here, and then they're saying um, these guys are more closely related than these guys. Fascinating. Look at this. This is a super cool study. This is super cool. All right, de Merrill Californica. This is super cool. This is, actually, this is awesome. Whoa. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's just kind of breeze through the discussion. Because um, this is pretty damn awesome. Alright. Angel sharks which show a very uh, consistent dorsal ventral compressed body plan. Um, I'm just going to kind of mumble read it and almost something jumps out on me. Blah, blah, blah apparently have experienced three major radiations, finally resulting in the current taxonomic diversity and spatial distribution. Okay, awesome. However, it's still difficult to clearly di differentiate extant angel shark species on the basis of morphological char characters, which has led to uncertainty in species designation. Similarly, many fossil species, which are in the most cases based on isolated teeth only, remain dubious, highlighting their highly conserved morphological nature and dental traits. Okay, so there's three major... Um, radiation, so three major, if I'm understanding it correctly, three major events in which species like diversified and um, like kind of formed the clads that exist today. This is so interesting. So, okay, um, between each clad, how is this to be considered? Caution. Blah, 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 blah. It's going to be projections between Australia's blah, blah, blah. Some of the most striking features in the skull of blah are laterally directed preorbitals and postorbitals, and also a wider arctic region compared to that of Squatina species. So, what's interesting for me, guys, is like, I don't really, uh, I'm not as interested in what the differences are specifically. I'm more interested in terms of like how they how they distinguish species so it's like the features themselves as they are i'm not super super like into that as much as like how they formed and how they make each of these species different so i don't know if that makes sense but i'm just kind of like looking for like what the differences can tell us um okay Those are the most ones are pretty more to space. More disparity. Because there traits like roster projections. In our study, we found that both descriptions be variation of the non species level. Hmm. They're talking about how angel sharks and uh, carpet sharks, like wobegons, are similar. You know, they're benthic predators. They lay on a seabed and they're ambush predators. Hmm. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, even though uh, wobegons and angel sharks, they have a similar lifestyle. The shared features between these two genera uh, most likely are a result of convergent evolution due to their particular lifestyle. So meaning, these guys are not closely related, but they have a similar niche, in the sense they're both uh, flat ambush predators, and so, you know, they independently evolved um, this kind of flat body plan um, and camouflage or, or um, just kind of like this ambush 
lifestyle. Um, you know, convergent evolution is kind of like, you know, bats and birds. You know, they both learn how to fly, or sorry, learned, uh, evolved to fly, but they're not, that doesn't mean they're closely related. They're just, they just occupy a similar niche, which adapt, like, like they, they've evolved to um, occupy that niche, um, but in different paths. So, interesting. Um, okay. Trying to find. Uh, she's by speciation. The blind are not extremely diverse into blah. Overall, angel sharks appear to have had a limited capacity for diversification with only two recognized genera so far. I didn't even know there were two. You mean like extinct and extant? I'm gonna check that really quick. Squatina is one of them. Is there a different genera of angel shark? Or a genus of angel shark? Am I going nuts? They might be talking about a fossil uh, genera I, 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 or a fossil genus. I don't. I don't think there's. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. <clears throat> okay. Mm. Just sharks range from a hundred to thirteen ninety meters. Hmm. I'm curious about, they mentioned three radiation events, and I'm trying to find them. Results suggest patterns of higher disparity in early members among angel sharks. Capacity of angel sharks diversified could also be trans. Uh. Hmm. From the description, it is possible to conclude that some of the traits that become apparent later in development under protrusion uh, of the rostrum and other changes in the shape of the head, while the expansion of the pectoral fins and flattening of the body develop earlier. The body plan angel sharks is unique among slatians, and there's only a share of. Yeah. Uh -huh. Conclusions. Our results indicate that there is a constrained and limited morphological disparity in angel sharks. Certainly, the phenotype disparity and morphological evolution rate might not always be correlated. Squatina forms with its single extant genus. Okay, so it's it's they were talking about one extant and one extinct genus earlier. Squatina possesses a set of morphological and behavioral traits for the specialized bottom dwelling ambush predatory lifestyle. The reduced diversity of angel sharks we observe today might be a result of a combination of the factors described above, which ultimately might have led to a restricted niche, even since the time they diverged from Pseudorhina. The major driver for the morphological disparity of extant Squatina forms is seemingly only geographic isolation. This is coupled with a higher integration in the extant species, which might limit the evolution between neurocranium models. So if I'm understanding this, um, angel sharks have a very specific niche, and that kind of limits how much they can diversify. And really, the biggest difference between the species is just simply where they live, in terms of like natural barriers um, preventing 
uh, or nat natural barriers like like ocean basins and stuff preventing um, what's the word like nat nat natural ba like 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 basically like the geography um, isolating different groups and clads from each other is what I'm getting but I don't really know why um, which is a big question I mean it's like Oh, yeah. They talked about three radiation events, but I don't. I, I didn't. If unless I missed it, I, I. They didn't really go into what those events might be. Hmm. Angel sharks, which show very consistent doors of entry from their survival plan, apparently have experienced three major radiations. What does that mean? Forty-six. Uh, use slashing and diversity across Cretaceous tertiary boundary. Uh, hmm. we could go into that. Um, so the reference for this whole three radiation thing is Crewet, Benton. Oh, sorry, uh, Crewet and Benton, Neo Slatchian diversity across the Cretaceous tertiary boundary, which I don't really. Paleogeographic, uh, paleogeography, paleoclimatology, paleoecology. I mean, it sounds really cool. Hmm. I don't know if that's public though. It's about. I mean, uh. all right. Let's give it a whirl. Let's see if we can find this. I probably can't, but let's see if we can give it a whirl. Ooh, Abzul. Let's do Abzul soundtrack as we kind of. So, okay, the three radiation events they're talking about in this paper is actually not in this paper, it's in a different paper. So let's see if we can find this paper, and if we can't, it's okay. Um, that was a cool study anyway, but I think the gist of it, unless I'm wrong, is that angel sharks have a very specific lifestyle. Um, there's not a lot of room for them to diversify in that lifestyle. There's not a really, like... Like, like what they have as far as being flat and the way their cranium is shaped in terms of being an ambush predator is pretty good and there's not a lot of room for um, change because like where they are, like, like how they live in their uh, ambush predator niche is pretty conserved. There's no, there's no real need to change that body plan is, is, is what I'm kind of getting out of that. And the only difference between the clads is where they live. Um, not how they live, but where they live. So, let's see if we can find this particular article. I don't think we can, probably, but this is from 2004. New Salachian diversity across the Cretaceous tertiary boundary. I doubt we can get this for free. Also, by the way, as a rule of thumb for this channel in this live stream um i would never live stream something that's like you have to pay for it because like that's you know not good like that's somebody's research oh my gosh is this actually public but if it's public you know it's already there and it's kind of like okay dude is this really public cool all right we found it all right, here we go. Fishes are often thought to be to have passed through ma uh, mass extinctions, including the Cretaceous uh, Tertiary event (KT event). Ooh, uh, relatively unscathed. We show that Neoslatian sharks suffered major extinction at the KT boundary. Out of 41 families, seven became extinct. The proportional measure uh, increases at lower taxic levels. Blah blah blah. However, the um, uh, the what the the mass Trichthian and Danian are characterized by a high number of singleton taxon taxa, excluding singletons. We have calculated laws of genera. What the hell is this? Sorry, I've never seen this before. Sorry. What the hell is this? Maastrichtian. This is a, a, a Cretaceous period. What? I've never heard of that. All right. Awesome. Go paleontology. I've never heard of this strata. That's interesting. Wow. Cool. All right. Uh, so I guess these are, you know, uh, blocks of time in the Cretaceous period. Fascinating. Uh, the simple completeness metric for uh, genera displays a decrease from the uh, Maastrichtian to the Dan uh, Danian, including, uh, sorry, indicating a rather complete fossil record of Neoslatian genera. 
The extinctions were heavy amongst both sharks and batoids, gets erased, but most severe amongst batoids, which lost almost all identifiable both species. Wow, the rays got hit, man. Uh, there were equal losses among uh, open marine apex predators. Cool. And durophagus demersal forms of the continental shelf and shallow seas. Mentopelagic deep sea forms were apparently a little affected. New families with similar ecological roles. Ooh, Carcharanidae. That's actually really cool. Carcharanidae or Carcharanidae is an, a new family as far as sharks go. That's fascinating. Isuridae. What, like Mako sharks? Isuridae? Mako sharks are in Lamnidae. But Isurus is the genus for mako sharks. I'm curious if this is like an ancient mako shark family. I don't know. We got, we got to focus on sand double. And Torpedinidae, I'm sure those are torpe torpedo rays. Uh, replace these families in Adanian. And full diversity of the different shark and batoid groups have been recovered by the end of the Paleocene or early Eocene. Sharks and rays suffered levels of extinction entirely in line with other groups of organisms at the KT extinction event. This is kind of awesome. This is, this is kind of badass. Sorry, this is like... All right, let's control find um, Squatina zero, okay. What I'm trying to find is, okay, radiation. Nope. I'm trying to find the three radiation events. Okay. Darn it. Uh, am I missing something? Is this like a partial article? Show more. Mm, Dewey, is this the whole article? Hmm. No, same thing. I'm trying to find the three radiation events for angel sharks. Uh, I might be missing this. This might view PDF. Oh, purchase PDF. Okay, so this might be just kind of like a brief overview. Yeah, okay, this is what's going on. Okay, so, and, okay, shoot, that was kind of right in the beginning. Okay. This is a cool study. Um, you have to pay for it, which I can't stream something that you have to pay for. Uh, what if I click the little book? Does it do anything? No, it does not. Okay, screw that. Shoot, okay, so uh, yeah, I can't stream something that I have to pay for, because uh, it's like, you know, that's kind of like stealing. If it's public, it's not, it's cool. You know, it's it's bringing more attention to science, but if it's like a, a volume that they pay for, I can't stream that, so, okay. All right, well, this is a cool idea, or a cool study, cool topic. So Neoslatching Chondrichthys diversity across the Cretaceous tertiary boundary. Uh, this was Jurgen Krewet and Michael J. Benton uh, from Paleogeography, uh, pale, <laughs> pale paleoclimatology, paleoecology. So this seems like a really cool study, and uh, shoot, I, it sounds like there's a lot of cool information if we were to get the whole PDF. So um, cool, cool, cool study that we can't get to, which is sad, sad, but it's okay. It's all right. Um, at least we got this one, which, you know, is telling us, you know, some really cool information about how angel sharks may have, like, diverged and how they're related to each other, which I think is pretty damn amazing. So, um, and to do that with, like, a fossil angel shark species and kind of, like, have that comparison, that's super, super cool. So, um, and I literally learned something new tonight. Like, I didn't know that Squatina de Merrill and Squatina Californica might be more closely related to each other than they are to the other angel sharks, so they might form a clad together, like a little subclad together, which is super, super cool. And it makes sense. Um, part of why that makes sense is, let's zoom in a little bit. Ha 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 ha. So, once upon a time, this part of the world, like around Panama, uh, used to be completely submerged, so species from the Pacific and species from the Caribbean, you know, would intermingle and, or like, not species, but groups would intermingle, and then eventually this isthmus formed, separating the two groups. 
but you can see similar uh, similar groups amongst a, a wide variety of marine taxa on either side of the isthmus. You know, like vertebrates, fish. You know, you'll see on either side of the isthmus closely related groups. And so, in that sense, it's no surprise that Squatina californica and Squatina demerol are more closely related to each other than the other um, angel sharks. I think that's super cool. I would suspect. Because I'm pretty sure the isthmus thing happened kind of, you know, totally, totally within this whole radiation event. If angel sharks date back to the Jurassic, then this totally happened, um, you know, around that timeline. So I, I'm, I would, I would almost bet that, you know, Squatina California and Squatina Demerol were all like together, like like that clad was all together, and then they, they diverged when the isthmus formed. I that's what I suspect would happen. So that's actually really cool. That makes total sense that these two are related versus all the others. That makes perfect sense to me. Freaking cool. Um, I have no idea why Eurasia, like, 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 Euro European, North African angel sharks are related to uh, West Asia, like West Pacific, East Asian angel sharks. I have no idea how that works. I have no idea why that might be. I have no idea. So. That's really fascinating. If you are into uh, biogeography, I guess <laughs> I guess that would be what that field is called. Um, and if you want to explain like what is going on here with this red clad of Japonica through Aculeata, please leave a comment. Uh, I would love an explanation because that's super cool and it's kind of blowing my mind. Because like look at look at that, look at that continent separating these two groups. How are these two groups more closely related to each other? than all the other angel shark groups. That's really fascinating to me, so. All right, um, this was an awesome study. Uh, I learned something new. Evolutionary Trends of the Conserved Neocranium Shape in Angel Sharks, published by Scientific Reports, Nature Research, uh, uh, written by Fabio Lopez Romero, uh, Sebastian Stumpf, Catherine Pfaff, Giuseppe Marema, Zarina Johansson and Jürgen Krewet. Thank you guys for writing this. This is a super, super cool study. And um, uh, lead author, uh, Department of Paleontology, University of Vienna. Okay, actually, look, here we go. University of Vienna, uh, Universo delle Studi di Torino, uh, Natural History Museum in London. Super cool. Awesome. Super, super cool study. That, that I learned something new. So thank you. Thank you for contributing to knowledge. So. Um, I think we're going to wrap up a little, little bit, bit. So, so what we'll do, we'll do is, is let's go back to, to let's have some pretty angel shark pictures. pictures, not me, pretty angel pretty pretty shark pictures, and let me just read the description of the species, species, species close out the night, and, and I think I think a fun way to end it. So, but I had a lot of fun, like this was an interesting study party that parties and turns that I didn't expect. And, uh, I learned something new, which is what all this whole house about. Pacific is the shark. Sand, sand, sand double, sand double, kind of related, yeah. related. So, so. All right, all right. Sand double stuff, stuff appears in the shallow, shallow water, water in spring, spring and summer off the USA. USA. Disappears, disappears presumably into deeper water in the winter. It is aggressive when captured, hence the English name, sand devil. Super cool. Need some water. My voice has a texture of sandpaper tonight, man. <laughs> it's it's crazy. Hmm. Get out of here, Squatina, Squatina. Let's go to Squat. Well, it will go to Squatina to Maryland a little bit. There we go. Um, viviparous, meaning it uh, gives birth to live young. Up to twenty-five pups per litter are born from late winter to early summer. Uh, similarly to the Pacific angel shark, check that out. Sand devil populations appear to have slightly different biological characteristics on the Atlantic coast and in the Gulf of Mexico. Wait a minute, what? Wait a minute, what? Uh, the Gulf of California population appears to mature at smaller size than the Baja Pacific Coast population. Okay, sorry. Very right, interesting. So it looks like Pacific angel shark in the North Pacific versus Baja uh, California area have slightly diff uh, different um, biology. So similarly, uh, a, a sand devil in the North Atlantic versus the Gulf of Mexico, slightly different biology. 
kind of cool that these two have a slightly different, like, like slightly different biology, but in sort of a similar pattern. Interesting. So it looks like the southern, southern subgroups of this population are kind of undergoing something similar. Hmm. Let me read that again. Similar to the Pacific angel shark, sand devil populations appear to have a slightly different biological characteristics on the Atlantic coast and the Gulf of Mexico. Litters off the North American Atlantic coast have 4 to 25 young per birth, while those in the Gulf of Mexico have only 4 to 10 young, with an average litter size of 7. The reproductive cycle for the species appears to be at least 2 years, but it is speculated that it may be up to 3 years long. It is a diet of small bottom fishes, crustaceans, and bivalves. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, I got it. Okay. So it looks like in the North Pacific, the Pacific Angel Shark um, takes a longer time to grow and mature. In the North Atlantic, the Sand Devil takes a longer time to grow and mature. In the South Pacific, the Pacific Angel Shark takes a shorter time to grow and mature. In the South Atlantic, the Sand Devil takes a shorter time to grow and mature. Fascinating. Okay. So the warmer the water, the <laughs> hold on okay the warmer the water the quicker it's maturing right no no okay whatever okay never mind okay okay so uh, scratch that so in the tropical parts of the range or there's a difference in life history characteristics between the tropical parts of these species range and the temperate parts of these species range so that that's that's the big takeaway gotcha okay sorry about that i had, I had to kind of think about that for a second okay interesting and i think that's fascinating because again these two guys are kind of related so squatina californica squatina dumeril kind of related that's interesting okay more closely related than other angel sharks that's really interesting Awesome. Okay, anyway. Uh, Ayusen red list status. There is no directed fisheries for the species, but is taken as a bycatch in other fisheries in the Gulf of Mexico. It is listed as a prohibited species in U.S. waters, meaning that it must not be targeted in fisheries due to its life history characteristics, which may make it vulnerable to heavy fishing exploitation. Okay. Um, angel sharks in the western Gulf of Mexico and tropical Caribbean need to be critically examined and their characteristics closer compared to those of sand devil and South American Atlantic coast species. Two new species, Squatina david and Squatina verii, recently, no, 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 we don't want the cake. We don't want the cake. Uh, recently described from the Caribbean and Southwest Atlantic are included in this book. Two other species, I've never heard of these two actually, uh, described from the western Gulf of Mexico, Squatina heteroptera and Squatina mexicana, like distinguishing characteristics to differentiate between each other and other known regional angel sharks. They are not therefore considered valid species, which is why we do not include them in this book. That's actually really cool and a little scary. So, because I thought sand devils were the only kind of angel shark that lived, um, you know, in the in the Atlantic. Yeah, I mean, sorry, in the Western Atlantic, um, like like in the American Atlantic. I didn't realize that there might be more species, which is a little freaky. It's kind of a trend in sharks where there might be species hiding in plain sight um, that have very subtle differences uh, so interesting well um, I kind of blabbed a lot but I l learned something completely new that sand devils and Pacific angel sharks are kind of closely related um, and form a clad um, that's unique compared to other kinds of angel sharks so sand devils is is it closer to a Pacific angel shark than it is to this species, Squatina squatina. That's super cool. All right, awesome. I think I might kind of end it there. Um, I, unfortunately, I don't have any more footage. Um, this shark is really hard to kind of like get good photos of, but again, I learned something new and it's kind of what this night is all about. So just, you know, learning and studying and, you know, just exploring the world together, so. Um, I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope you got some stuff done if you were uh, working on something yourself. So, um, <laughs> look, look at all these crazy photos, man. Look at that face. Isn't it an adorable face? Anyway, 
But I'm going to probably wrap it up now uh, for now, guys. But I hope you have a very happy Thanksgiving. And I hope you enjoy um, your holiday break. And I hope you enjoyed this video. And uh, please like and subscribe to su support the channel. And please leave a comment on, um, you know, what you would like to learn and, like, what shark you want to talk about. And any music recommendations. I, I would love to hear them. So... But thanks for, uh, so much for watching. Love you guys. Have a happy holiday season. And I will see you next week, 9 o'clock, Monday. We'll, we'll see you soon. Bye, guys.